This week we have a chemist, an entrepreneur, and a grad student. No, it's not three different people, it's just one cool person. So we're going to get into who she is and what she's been doing. I mean, business lady style. <laughs> and you're watching on the lifestyle and this week's Armenian business lady is Alexa Hakopian. She's a chemist, entrepreneur and a grad student all in one. <laughs> very, very inspiring. So before we meet her, um, if you're new to my channel, we talk about mindset, money, business, books, and so much more. So if you like all these things, click the like button below and subscribe because we post videos every Wednesday. Alrighty, so Alexa, how are you? Welcome to the lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm great. I'm so excited to be here. So excited to have you. We got our teas and coffees, guys. So grab yours and we're gonna get talking. All right. So Alexa, it's actually the first time we're meeting each other like almost face to face. This is as close as we could get right now. Uh, until now, we've been hearing each other's voices, but we hadn't seen each other's faces. <laughs> this is weird. And we'll get into why, because we've been talking on Clubhouse. and But first and foremost, how are you? And who are you? Please share. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, this is this is really exciting. Um, so like you said, my name is Alexa. I'm 22 years old. Um, I'm a chemist. So I went for my bachelor's in chemistry. And like you said, I'm a graduate student. So I'm going for my master's in chemistry right now. Um, I work full time also in chemistry. As you can tell, my periodic tables are in the back. So I love chemistry. <laughs> um, I work in healthcare. So I work for um, like orthopedics. I do implants hands, um, you know, instruments for surgery, all of that kind of good stuff. Um, and then beyond my chemist side, um, I'm also working on developing a brand that I started with my family called Anexia Beauty, um, where we specialize in skincare and cosmetic tools. Um, you know, more than that, we just try and really promote what you're using on your skin. I think growing up in a family with three women, me, my mom and my sister, um, you know, makeup and cosmetics has always been something really important to us, but my mom has always emphasized how important skincare is. And like, at the end of the day, you cannot like go to sleep with your makeup on. You have to take it off no matter how tired you are. Um, and so now I think we also want to use it, you know, as an educational platform to really make you conscious about the, you know, the materials that you use on your skin, the, the way that you use products on your skin and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's my that's my most exciting project right now. And then, like Alice said, I'm also on Clubhouse right now. So I have two clubs of my own, which is very, very exciting. Also with two people that I met on Clubhouse. So literally, I had only heard their voices um, up to, you know, when we started talking on Zoom. And that's been my that's been my biggest project at the moment, which I'm really excited about. So hopefully, um, again, like she said, I'm an entrepreneur. So now my eye, like now my brain kind of goes to all of these business places and ideas so hopefully that will be my next venture um but yeah how are you doing <laughs> thanks for letting me ramble that's awesome i'm good thank you um it's, it's so weird so because a lot of people have this um vision or image of what an entrepreneur should look like so you're you've been claiming uh, you're an entrepreneur um but you're also in chemistry so how does how do you like mix those two together yeah you know it's it's really weird it kind of just like happened so like I was just in in college just like doing my day-to-day -day, right like my parents had always just wanted me to focus on my academics like I worked on campus so like I was like a tutor kind of doing all that stuff um but like ever since I've been growing up, my dad especially has always promoted to be your own boss. Like whatever you can do in life, like try and be your own boss at least one point in your life. And so there was a point in our lives where my mom actually had this idea for a product that she wanted to develop um, or create that she had literally been using for years, like just making it out of makeshift materials. Um, and, you know, at one point, like my sister and I were old enough, we could like be more independent, take care of ourselves. Like we didn't always need our mom um, there as well. So we're like, mom, 
like, I think this is the time, like, this is the time for you to go ahead and start this business, right? Because that was also like my parents, you know, dream that I think they never thought they would be able to do coming from, you know, another country having to work to get to where they are today. Um, but anyways, it's kind of like the background of it. So then we all sat down and we were like, listen, we all have something that we're we're good at or like we're okay at so like for example like my dad's an accountant we're like he can do all the, everything finance my mom is like the brain behind the products um and then my sister and I are really great at social media so we're like we can each do one portion and we can do one thing of our t- like we can take one hour of our time every day to really sit down and build something so over the course of three years because we didn't know anything going into this like we didn't know how to we didn't know how to patent a product. We didn't know how to design or manufacture it. So it took probably longer than the like expected, but it was definitely an incredible learning process. And I think our parents really allowed us to be with them every step of the way to really know how everything was going on, um, which A, really helped me if I ever want to do something similar to them. Um, but it also just really opened my mind up to saying like, hey, you know, like, you're not only one thing, like, you don't only have to be a chemist, like, your whole life doesn't have to revolve around chemistry, because, you know, like, being Armenian, like, our parents want us to be the best, you know, major, they want us to excel in that field, you know, doctor, lawyer, something, right, and so, you know, in my head, I was always like, oh, like, I have to be the best chemist possible, I only have to be a chemist, and I was like, I love helping people, and that's why I got into healthcare from my job, but, you know, being involved in Anexia showed me that, like, I don't only have to be chemists. Like, I, even on Clubhouse, right, like, I have two clubs where it's all about helping the next generation, right, really making a space, like, I call it, like, community curator I am, um, where it's just making spaces for people to come together and talk about different topics. Um, So, for example, like, we talk about finance. I'm like, I'm not in finance. Um, So, it's something, like, out of your day-to-day, and it's, like, for me to understand that I can help people not just through my job, not just through healthcare, but through different platforms, I think has almost helped me realize that I can do pretty much any, like pretty much anything in any way that I want, right? So like if I was on Clubhouse and I saw that there was a space missing for young people to get together and talk, now my brain is like, well, do something about it. Like you have, you're able to, right? And if I am invested in something, then I put my 100% into it, right? So it doesn't matter that I have to work from, you know, eight to four or from nine to five for my job, right? Because afterwards, instead of doing, you know, instead of just lounging on TikTok, for example, like I'll, I'll, I'll host a room and I'll bring people together or I'll have a photo shoot for Anexia and I'll like take our products and I'll, you know, so I just think it's like, if you find something that you're really invested in and that you're really passionate about, I think that, you know, you really can do anything and it, you know, you're not just one thing, you're not just your corporate job, you know, I know that a lot of people say, and I know I'm kind of going on a ramble here, but I love this topic, you know, I know a lot of people always say that, you know, um, you know, I had to quit my corporate job to be an entrepreneur. Like I had to, you know, quit my corporate job so that I could really pursue my passions. And it's like, I love my job. Like I I really do love my job. I love what I do, the people that I work with, the people I get to meet. Um, and it's like, I don't want to give up that side. And I also don't want to give up, you know, being an entrepreneur and kind of exploring what this new world is to me. Um, and I realized that like, I really don't have to give up one or the other. I can really do them both at the same time. It's just about, you know, prioritizing an organization. And like I said, if you're really passionate about what you're doing you're really going to find and make the time to do it all um so that's kind of how the two of them started that's kind of how I meshed them together right now I hope that answered your question but yeah I'm really passionate about this topic because I feel like I really want people to know they really can do anything they put their mind to it doesn't matter if they already have a thousand things going on yes you did answer the question and more but uh, also to add um most people who decide to quit their corporate job to follow their dreams as an entrepreneur is because they didn't like what they were doing right but in your situation is totally different and if anyone says no you can't do one or the other you have to do one or the other well like long time we leave you know <laughs> they could talk all they want right um and also when we're talking about purpose that everyone um finds a purpose in different things i don't know if you've ever been part of uh, sirena and mine um a club where we were talking about uh, living with purpose. And one of these uh, conversations was, what a small thing did you do today that was, you know, purpose driven? And 
our life is not to work towards one purpose only. It could change throughout the years as we grow. And we could have more than one at the same time. So if for you, your caregiver side is like, I need to be in chemistry, be in healthcare, help people out. But at the same time, my helping genes want to go in this other direction too. Well, you could do both. Why not? Um, also, if you haven't seen this video where I talk about the three different paths of finding your purpose or getting to it, um, transition is one of them. So a lot of times you'll be in two places and you love both, but eventually one of them is going to reduce in passion, let's say, if ever it does, sometimes it won't. And it'll be your transition period where you'll be like, okay, well, now I can fully go into this path which is super interesting for you. Have you ever thought though, that maybe you could use your chemistry um, awesome geniusness to create a whole new skincare line? Yes, actually. So it never, it literally never occurred to me until some like, honestly, some random person on Clubhouse told me, well, you're a chemist. Like, how do you view skincare? How do you view cosmetics? I was like, oh my God, wait. So then after that moment, I kind of did like a dive deep into every material that we use, into everything that we had done, like in our manufacturing lines to kind of be like, well, what are we using? Like what, you know, we're really promoting, you know, the, to use like natural, vegan, like all these kinds of products on your skin. But I've never really done a dive deep into like the chemistry side of what we're using, right? Like I know the the base material and that it's like good for you and it's like good to put on your skin it's like okay um but I never really knew like that chemistry behind it and like I guess I'm a little nerd in that sense but um yeah I think knowing this now I think I'd be so interested to kind of go further if we ever want to branch out of you know cosmetic and skincare tools I think if we ever want like I have a line where it's like actual skincare products like creams lotions those kinds of things I think I would definitely love to be like the forefront of the research for that that would be super awesome but for now you're helping in a way to say well these are the ingredients that you you can find and this is what you should be looking out for to not include in your skincare routine which is pretty cool do you want to talk about a bit uh, those ingredients maybe we could get, get into that a little yeah sure absolutely so um our our biggest product the one that we actually patented the design for it's called the eye eclipse so basically the product is to uh, help you take off your eye makeup at night without actually um I guess manipulating or touching this part of your eye which is the the softest part of your eye and that's the most sensitive part so for me and my mom and my sister being our lovely Armenian jeans were very pale so um every time I like I would take off my eye makeup even today if I were to just take it off my under eye gets really really red and really irritated and so my mom had come up with this product where essentially it almost looks like a half crescent um, and you put it under your eye and you take off your eye makeup and your eye makeup comes off onto that product rather than onto um, your skin. And so you don't have to like take it off and then rub it um, from your skin. Um, and so basically that the material that we use for that product, we chose this hard plastic material, which is the part um, that you'll put on your skin. And then the other part you just hold with your hand. So that's like another similar hard plastic. Um, and the material is basically something that you would even find in a lot of like healthcare, you know, um, I guess like medical devices, for example, or even like if the, my best example is if you have ever seen like baby spoons where they have the little like rubbery part at the bottom of it, or like as the spoon part and you like feed your child with that, that is the same exact product. So products that will actually like use on babies and like actually like, I guess kind of like put in our mouths like orally, you would actually be able to just put that on your skin and see no effects. Right. So um, unless you know that you like, you would I guess have an allergy to that you know specific material it really isn't harmful to anyone um and it's actually really great it's like a vegan material it's cruelty free the way that they produce it um which is another really big thing that we like to promote um same thing with our brushes we actually work with a manufacturer to bring them in um but we actually took a look at a lot of them so the bristles that you're using are from vegan and um naturally sourced uh, materials which is really really great um and then you know again 
the testing on those products is also cruelty free, which is why we'd like to go with them. Um, but yeah, so, you know, our standard like brush sets or brush lines are kind of something that, you know, every girl knows, but I think that our eye eclipse product is really the one that we want to showcase and highlight every time I talk about the brand, because that's the one that we were involved in the most like packaging and labeling and, you know, even designing it, choosing colors, like the whole kind of A through Z, which is really great. Um, you know, and I just really believe, I feel like until you don't use the product, you're not going to know its benefits. And that's why we are really trying to grow our, like our brand presence, um, on social media. I think it's been our biggest help at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think every girl needs it, especially for, for someone like our age, like we'll probably not think of like wrinkles until we're like, I don't know, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line until we start seeing a wrinkle. But I know for myself that if I start using it now, the patience that I have for the next 10 years in using it will help me like hundredfold. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of a little bit about our products that we have. That's so cool. How long ago did you guys start? So we probably started about, let me see, about like three, four years ago. And then I want to say that we officially launched like on social media about like probably six to eight months ago. That's so cool. Uh, and you guys have uh, grown pretty like fast on social media, I want to say, right? Yeah. So on social media, we've actually been um, go, like having, I guess, a brand presence on a lot of different um, social media platforms. And I would say some have grown faster than others. So for example, Instagram has been a little bit slower than normal, right? Instagram takes a lot of time and a lot of patience and consistency. But on an app like TikTok or Pinterest, we're having, you know, upwards of, you know, on Pinterest, like a thousands of monthly viewers. And then on, you know, Pinterest, my, I mean, on TikTok, sorry. Now my mom is the TikTok queen. She has like a thousand, a thousand somewhat followers and growing consistently. Um, so definitely some platforms have been like growing faster than others. But um, I think, you know, again, with social media, we're just like able to kind of recycle content onto every platform. And you're able to just gain that platform's audience very quickly and very easily because you keep putting out content. Um, so, so yeah, it, it has been steady. It's been good. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited. I think, you know, with social media, the, the branding for a business is so different than personal. And I think that's something that we had to learn very, very quickly when my sister and I were like, oh, like we know how to do social media. It'll be great. And then we get to the business owner. We're like, no, just kidding. I have no idea. <laughs> um, so it's definitely a big learning curve. It still is a big learning curve, but I think um, I think we're getting the hang of it. Um, and I think that it's paying off. So it's been it's actually been quite rewarding, I would say. That's awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see. I've, I haven't seen you guys on TikTok yet. I'm really excited to see your mom. <laughs> she doing any TikTok dances? <laughs> She, honestly the first I want to say the first time she might have but now she's kind of just like the beauty guru queen where she sits there and she tells you all about her skincare and she really shows you how to like use our products and she gives you all like these tips and tricks um so it's been fun she actually has like I think probably three accounts or two accounts on TikTok so you can definitely go and check her out over there because it's actually it's actually pretty good the content <laughs> She used to, I'll tell you a funny story. I used to be like, mom, like, don't worry. Like, you don't have to be nervous to like show your face. Cause like, she was very nervous in the beginning. Um, I was like, I'll sit with you. I'll make the content. So that's what we did. Like I sat with her. We kind of like planned out like how to do the content, this and that. And now sometimes I'll go into her room and she's like, Lex, don't bother me. I'm shooting TikToks. I'm like, mom, she's like, gna, gna. she's like, I need it to be quiet. I need my space. I'm like, okay okay i'm like i'm proud but i'm also offended that you don't need me anymore uh, who's the millennial now yeah exactly oh. <laughs> that's awesome we're all we're all gonna have to go check it out and at the end i'll ask for the handle and everything um and now let's kind of get into more of the mindset side we like to get into um when did you first have this idea of yeah i'm an entrepreneur that's a great question so I always feel like whenever it came to Anexia in the beginning, it was more like, oh, my sister and I are kind of just like following the brand and kind of following the process, kind of like really seeing what's going on um, because we were just like learning, right? Like my, you know, I wasn't really involved in the, you know, design or anything like that, right? Like I was kind of just in the background learning. Um, and then I think once it kind of got more towards the social media aspect of it, where we got more involved because it was, you know, social media is our marketing platform, right? It's not like we market 
you know, anywhere else really. Um, so it's kind of like we decided to take on the role of being the entire business. And I think being involved more in the social media, seeing feedback from people, seeing what people wanted, I think I was able to get more involved in the in the business aspect. Like what do we want to invest in buying for our products, for example, like packaging, or like, do we want to get involved and do collaborations with other people or, you know, kind of all of this stuff. So when I got involved more in those conversations, um, I was like, wait a minute, like I'm really being involved in growing this business. I'm really kind of taking on this like entrepreneurial role and I think so you know when those kinds of conversations started happening we kind of started having sit down meetings as like a family I think that's when I started considering myself um an entrepreneur and then I think that I think it was kind of just a natural progression as to when people could also kind of see like she's breaking out of her shell of just thinking she's like a student or just like you know her chemistry right I think I was kind of looking to you know, have something more to to my name as well, right? So like Anexia is our family, you know, brand. We kind of like really all brought it up together. But I think now it's really interesting that, you know, I'm kind of looking into these other spaces where, you know, I can I can have something to my own name. I can grow, you know, it doesn't have to just be one brand. It can be one brand, two brands, three brands or businesses. Um, and I think kind of like when I started to think like that, I realized like, oh, damn, I think I am an entrepreneur because now my mindset has kind of shifted in that in that direction. So I really think it was like this very like um, it was like this short period of time where it was kind of just like all of these little, little things happening that I was like, oh, I am progressing into like my own entrepreneur, into like my own like businesswoman. Um, and so, yeah, I think it was kind of just like the slow progression of like my mindset shifting. So cool. And um, what about Clubhouse? Because um, I feel like that's where you've taken your personal take on it. Is is more of an independent, you know, um, journey uh, versus Anexia, which is a family business. So, how has uh, Clubhouse shaped you in a different way, especially the groups, the uh, the clubs that you created? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because I feel like it might be. I don't know if it's like too early to say with Clubhouse, but Clubhouse has really helped change my mindset like probably the most out of anything that I've ever done um so when I was on Clubhouse in the beginning and like I don't know if, I, if you were on it early as well but like I would go on the app and I would see these rooms where like either these like really big influencers with like thousands of followers were having rooms or it was on topics that like I just had no idea how to contribute to like I can't go on a stage where like it's all these experts and like talk about like crypto for example um and so I was like, dang, like there's really a space missing for people like me who like just want to have a conversation. Um, and so I just really wanted to bring that, but I didn't really know how, like, I didn't really know if it was going to be through a club. I didn't know if I should do it by myself, like if people were going to care. Um, and then I just randomly met this girl in a room who was saying like, hey, like, I also think that there's a space missing. I would love to bring it to Clubhouse. If anybody wants to collaborate, DM me, let me know. And I never, ever DM people randomly. Like before Clubhouse, like I would never just be like, hey, how's it going? Or I would never be like, hey, Alice, how are you? Like, I saw you in a Clubhouse room. Like never would I do that in my life. Um, but I did with this girl, her name is Emma. And I just messaged her and I was like, hey, like I totally resonate with what you're saying. I've been thinking about how to do this, but I'm just you know I'm not sure but I think you know if we collaborate I think we could really do something and so that's literally what we did we just started hosting rooms um under a club we started to get to know people like the kind of like bigger people who were the founders of the club because we were consistent now we have our own clubs one is called young women professionals and the other one is called gen next um so one is just for young women and the other one is for um men and women um and I just honestly, it, that has been what has been changing my mindset to be like, I can be, I can do whatever I want to do, like whatever I put my mind to, I can really do. And I think, especially with Clubhouse, like, as you can tell, I love to ramble, I love to talk. Um, so that platform has really like been my benefit, because I think my personality really shows through. Uh, and I think that I think that people like it, you know, people keep coming back to, to hear us talk and to, to see what rooms we have. And I think, you know, I have you know, not to do my own horn at all, but like I've grown exponentially on that platform. And I think that 
it is saying something in terms of, you know, when you, especially with Clubhouse, I always say, if you're really passionate about something and you talk about it, that passion really resonates through your voice, I think more than it would through an Instagram post or um, like a TikTok or a Pinterest post or whatever it might be, right? I just think that there's something about the voice, like why people are into podcasts, for example, right? I just think it's something about hearing people and really understanding their personalities that people resonate with and people want to come back to. Um, and I think, you know, seeing the, not only being able to curate the community, like, wow, I really did that, but seeing the response and honestly, the exponential growth in our clubs, it was an overwhelming response that I wasn't prepared for. Like, I still don't think I know how to handle the club well. Um, I think it's definitely a work in progress in terms of like collaborations and hosting opportunities and really having these engaging communities, um, especially with, you know, everything else going on. Like, as you know, Clubhouse you can be on Clubhouse for hours, honestly. Um, so I think it's it's definitely been something very new, very challenging. Um, but, you know, I think that the girls that I'm working with are also, we're all in the same both in terms of working full-time, being students, entrepreneurs. So we've all really been able to be honest with one another in terms of growing this club. Um, but yeah, I think I think the response is really what kind of drives me to be like, this is really something real and you can really make something out of this like you took something you took a space where you saw was empty and you made something of it right like I'm sure that you know I know a lot of other people have created the same or similar spaces as well for young professionals but I I think that there's really something um what's the word magical I guess in terms of what we've created where it's more based on a community rather than like hey I can teach you so much it's more like hey like I'm in the same boat as you let's have a conversation as to why we're both you know um you know where we are today or let's talk a let's talk organization or let's talk about our purpose for example or our mindsets so it's more about comparing rather than me telling you like hey let me tell you what your purpose is um so yeah, it really has been, and you can tell I love Clubhouse. It's just been this incredible platform that has opened up my mind in so many incredible ways and to so many incredible people like yourself, um, where we can like have these conversations further and then put out this content for other people to to, to gain value from. And I think that that's so great. Um, so yeah, but I think, you know, being able to talk about your passion is just, is just something that other social media platforms can't capture. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I feel like Clubhouse has connected people even more than let's say LinkedIn. For some reason, I would never be able to communicate with anyone on LinkedIn or any professional platform, social media platform, let's say, versus Clubhouse, where it's just, they're hearing your voice, they see a picture, that's about it. And yes, this person, my kind of people, let me reach out, let's network and get to work together, which is totally crazy that we've been able to do that um you kind of mentioned it but I want to like get into it a little bit more what did you, what kind of knowledge or content did you want to bring when you created the young professionals um club yeah that's a great question yeah. so uh, at first I think it was we really just want to bring a space for people to just like chat and like get to know each other and network um and I think it worked really well because now we have almost like this community of people that keep coming back and keep supporting us because we were able to have like those networking sessions and honestly some people have gotten jobs from that some people have been able to have job interviews from that or you know if somebody comes into the room they're like hey I can offer you like uh, a name of a person you can reach out to I think those types of connections were really what we were looking to bring in the first place but I think now uh what's been really interesting is people kind of want to come to Clubhouse to get out of their day to day, right? So I think in the beginning, Clubhouse was more so like very this like professional connotation. But I think, you know, now what we're trying to aim to do is bring these really like calm spaces where people can just like have a chat about anything outside of their day to day. So sometimes we do like to have educational rooms, let's say on, um, oh, sorry, on like finance, or like I said, I kind of keep going back to the finance, um, like finance, or even how to build your own business or what it means to have your own personal brand. So we kind of, we kind of like to have those more professional conversations to really help people um, like understand things. Like I would never learn about crypto outside of like my like day-to-day job, right? Like, or in my day-to-day job. Um, so I think that's a great platform for me to go learn something and then be able to start that conversation with someone else, right? So I don't only have to talk about, you know, what I do in my day-to-day, I can actually contribute to a conversation if I know that they're into cryptocurrency, for example. Um, 
but then we also just like to have rooms where it's like I really love to journal what are your habits and I'll tell you my habits and maybe you know you can you can gain something from it or we have uh rooms where it's like the room title is called not all paths are linear so it's kind of just a place for people to come and just share their stories you know like on clubhouse people people love to talk people love sharing their own personal stories people love sharing their experiences so really just providing any type of room where people can come and give their input I think is really really important so we have you know that where people can come and really really be their open self and really be like vulnerable as people say on the app um really kind of share their story so we have like it's I would say it's a good balance between like educational where we have like speakers come in and really talk about their niche and their passions um and then also kind of rooms where we really just have people connect and contribute with their own experiences and um their own you know thoughts and opinions right because I think that community engagement is what we've always kind of wanted since the beginning so I think anything that we do in any topic under that you know umbrella will essentially fall under having our audience you know always speaking on our platform somehow some way that's so cool and um, the way you're speaking is as if you're on clubhouse every single day <laughs> and i used to be like that too until now like we're uh, I think everyone knows at this point, like we're launching Hada's Outbox and I've been focused on that. So I haven't been on Clubhouse in a very long time and now I'm like, ah, I miss it. <laughs> um, but what I'm trying to get at is like uh, the way you are presenting yourself is as if like you love this go, 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 like I have a conversation here, do this there, go to work, uh, whatever, and come out and help with the family business. So I feel like your schedule looks nuts. Can you like describe to us what like a day in your life would look like? Yeah, yeah. And honestly, this is really interesting because I am so that like I need to be productive at every second of the day. Otherwise, I feel like I'm wasting the day. Um, and I kind of have been really trying hard to to shift out of that mindset and kind of be like, hey, you know what, like, it's okay to just take five minutes to breathe. Like, it's okay if you don't want to take a whole day or if you don't have a whole hour. But I think starting with five minutes has been so helpful, even just to go with for a walk without like being on my phone. So I think I'm definitely starting to incorporate a little bit more of that into my um, into my day to day, which I just want to disclaimer, I think is so important to do. Um, so yeah, my day to day pretty much looks like well, now it's really nice because I'm working from home um, as well most days. So I pretty much just get up get a cup of tea, as you could tell every day. Um, and then I kind of just come to my desk. I typically try and like do work if it's from, I probably work from like eight to four. I try and only focus on doing work. Um, if we have some like speaker guest rooms that my like other like co-founders are doing, I'll kind of just hop in to listen because again, it's almost like a podcast. So I would either have a podcast on in the back or I can have Clubhouse. So I'll typically, you know, just try and do my normal day to day work. Um, and then after that, you know, in between probably four to six, I would say I'm on Clubhouse. We're hosting rooms. I'm hosting my own room on a topic. Um, I'm, you know, guest speaking or we're collaborating, doing something. Um, and then while I'm on Clubhouse, I'm probably doing like some social media thing for Anexia, for myself, for our other two IGs for Clubhouse. Um, and then six o'clock, I have dinner. 6.30, I'm in class till nine. And then after that, <laughs> I know, I know, um, which is only two days a week class, so that's good. And then at nine o'clock, I'm either, I'm either black, back in the clubhouse room, which we were in the Armenian Women's Network one. I'll either be in that room on Wednesday nights or, um, or I'm doing homework and that's kind of just like my night. So I think I've been really honest with how much time I have to spend on clubhouse. It definitely was more like consuming my work time as well in the beginning but I think now that's pretty much how my day-to-day -day looks like because I've been very very honest with myself as to how much time I'm willing to dedicate to Clubhouse um, and even just to social media in general so um so yeah it's kind of what a day in my life is wow <laughs> I know I need to breathe I need to breathe <laughs> after that <laughs> um so would you say that you do most of your like mindset work while listening to podcasts and listening to Clubhouse or do you have like a separate time where you're like okay this is my self-care time I take a book I read yeah great question so what I've actually started to do 
um, probably at the beginning of this year, which is actually a little bit before I started like really getting into like the Anexia branding and like the clubhouse kind of like all that like personal branding stuff. Um, I would journal. So I made myself like a vision board um, that I literally keep on a notebook right in front of my desk. So I like literally am looking at it like every time I'm doing work or anything. Um, and I just started journaling in the morning. I kind of started this like manifestation, setting my intentions for the day. So it I literally takes five minutes. Like I literally just jot down like what I'm looking for in my day and look what I'm looking for like in the long term in the future and that's kind of like how I start my morning um and then at night it's kind of like I'll go back and do like a little reflection again five minutes so in my total day it's like 10 minutes um and then and then yeah I actually do read at nights um sometimes I really try I really try to not be on my phone as much like on social media at nights um so I always keep like a book on my um nightstand currently it's Arabian nights to kind of just like um I guess remind me like if I see it I'll do it you know so it's kind of one of those things um but yeah the journaling has honestly helped me so much like even even when it comes to journaling like my to-do list for my day-to-day -day, it's kind of like my little creative moment like oh I'm writing down what I have to do every day but I kind of have like a section and I have colors and it's kind of this and this so I've kind of just like made those daily habits into something fun um and I think you know it takes 14 days to start a habit so now I think when it comes to you know journaling and kind of the manifestation mindset um it's kind of just automatically how I start my mornings now because I've been doing it for so long um and it really works and when you see results like when if I promise if you're patient you will see results um and I think then it's just going to motivate you to keep doing it and then you can kind of like tick off everything that you had said. Um, and then I just think it's really interesting to see like how, you know, when you really want something and you're putting it out into the universe, it'll do everything in its power to really kind of bring that back to you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how I incorporate it. It literally just 10 minutes a day, um, but I would rather use that 10 minutes a day on that rather than like social media, for example. I feel like it makes all the difference. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yay, yay. <laughs> so uh, what book have you read that you're like, oh my God, well, when it comes to personal growth, because you know, we read uh, Harry Potter, we can read all the other books and be like, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, but no, um, mindset wise, personal growth wise, what is one book that you read and you're like, everyone should read this? The book, I actually brought it out. It's actually called You Are a Badass and Making Money. And this author, she actually has like a You Are a Badass collection of books. So it's not just like at making money. It can be about like uh, um, being, you know, your best self, living your best life and kind of all of that thing. And I think the way that she kind of shifts your mindset, especially in this book, when it comes to um, money and business is not so much like here's all the things that you can do to make money for yourself and see response, right? It's more so like, here's how to look at money and here's how to view wealth and business and finances and all of that in order for you to, to bring this abundance into your life. So it's, it, it really just changes your view to be like, you know, money isn't the end all be all, right? Like it's not my, it's not really my goal. My goal is personal fulfillment through what I'm doing. Money and monetization is, the bonus right it's so it's what i guess is um what's the word i'm looking for um rewarding i guess like it's your reward for your time and your efforts um but the actual fulfillment that you get from what you're doing is i guess the real reward um so i just think that she really helps you look at life and business and kind of all of these things in, in a different way and i think it's it, like once you read it you'll kind of start seeing everything in that viewpoint um so it's not like oh, wealth, I need it. I need to do A, B, C to get it. It's like, no, if you start looking at it as, you know, a side bonus and you really take a, a, a dive deep into what your real purpose is, um, into what you're doing, right? So like with Anexia, I think, yes, it's a business that we wanted to start. It's something that, you know, of course we wanted to monetize, right? Because we're selling products. But I think the end goal for us was essentially to have something to our name, to create a product that was really ours, right? We wanted to go through that process. And now on social media, the goal is to educate, right? Like I was saying on, you know, what you're using on your skin and all that kind of stuff. And same thing with Clubhouse, right? Yes, it would be great to turn it into something more, but right now it's just about building a community. Um, and I think, you know, the monetization part of it, like even if Clubhouse has brought monetization, like it's not what we're looking for at all. And I think, 
having this book like having had read this book and her other ones I had read as well just about like living your life like how to be a badass at life um I think just really helped me understand that um and I truly believe that like when you're not looking for something, it will come to you. So like I really, for Anexia, like we weren't really looking for, you know, of course we monetize, right? Or like even on Clubhouse, right? Like I wasn't getting on there to build a business. I kind of just wanted to see what the app was about. But now it's like, we're able to think about building a business and building a brand to, to cater to even more people off of the app. Um, and while, you know, monetization and wealth can be a key, um, you know, factor in building that, I think it's not what we're, um, what our main goal is. So I don't know if this is making sense, but just the, just the way that it's been able to shape my mind into not thinking about it as what it is into thinking about, you know, what is really going to fulfill you? What is really going to bring abundance into you? And, you know, if you, if you really want something, then the universe is just going to conspire to bring it to you. Um, and if you truly believe that, then it'll happen. And so, um, yeah, I hope that made sense. That was a bit of a book ramble. <laughs> no, it totally made sense. Is it Baron Hagopian approved? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so um you also mentioned like the money being just like a reward for some people um the reward is why they would do it not necessarily the journey or the process of it but that's based on their human design which is a totally different conversation so most people um are either wired to work for the result and other people are wired to work for the process and just reap the reward at the end, which is pretty cool. And so I love that that's more what's being, you know, mentioned in the book versus like, do this and you'll get a million dollars. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that's the best part, right? Like it kind of makes you feel like, okay, that comes at, for example, in this one with you are badass at making money specifically, it's like that comes at the end, but you're missing the point of what's happening from zero to a hundred. So I think you being more focused than on being like, okay, this is like just step one. Like I can't think about step 100. Right. And I think even when it comes to, even when it comes to hosting rooms on clubhouse and really bringing um, these spaces, like you were saying, what is something that you're going to do today um, for yourself? And we always say, like, what is something that you're going to do today to make yourself better for tomorrow? And what is something that you're going to do today that your tomorrow self will appreciate about you? And so I think, you know, if you're starting a business and you don't see, um, like a hundred people buying your product on day one. It's like, well, why are you getting discouraged? It's like, you've done so much to get to where you are already. And you're seeing, you know, people supporting you, you know, whether it's monetary or not, like a product or even just, for example, with Clubhouse, like just coming into my room and supporting me, like it's huge. Like that reward and that fulfillment means so much more to me than if, so, like, I don't want people to pay me. Like I'm, I'm, curating a community right like I'm just building a community I'm not um I'm not looking to educate people on stuff that I know like what I'm 22 like how much have I learned about being a young professional right so I think it's it really helps you be more mindful of the process rather than being like oh like I don't really remember what I did in the process or it didn't really matter because now I'm here I'm at the end goal right um and I think it it really helps you kind of you know, be more in the moment, which is something that I struggle with doing sometimes. So it kind of really brings you into the present. I love that. I love how self-aware you are and like that you're focusing more on being mindful because anything we do in, within our day to day, the more mindful we are, the um, more content we'll be with what we're doing. Uh, so I absolutely love that. And Thank you for sharing. And now that we're kind of wrapping up, uh, we've been talking for a long time. We, I think we could talk for days, you and I. But um, just to close this off, um, and I love to ask this question to every single person that comes on here on Armenian Business Ladies, what is the best advice you've ever been given? Ooh, I'll tell you a quote because it literally is my wallpaper. It's everything. Um, so the quote is, what if it doesn't happen? And then it just says dot, 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 ah, but what if it does? And so I think when I heard that quote, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. Like I literally could talk about it again for days because I love it. It's like, well, you know, what if it doesn't happen? What's the point of me even trying? It's like, wait a minute, but what if it does happen? Imagine the possibilities and the opportunities that you might be missing out on just because you were like, it's probably not going to happen, but it 
probably might happen. Like you have no idea. Um, and so I literally live by that quote because anything that I do, for example, with Anexia, right? We were like, oh, like, you know, social media is so hard for business and like, it's so hard to grow yourself, but it's like, wait, but what if we do grow? Like, what if it does turn into something more than, you know, a brand? It can turn into an educational platform or with Clubhouse, it's like, oh, but like, it's just, you're just hosting rooms. Like what's going to happen, right? It's like, oh, but but what if something does happen? What if you're able to, you know, create something for people? What if you're able to, to create jobs for people? Like we already have done in some situations or what if you're able to give people opportunities or other possibilities or even for myself? Um, so I love that quote. I literally have made it a wallpaper. I think it's incredible. Um, so it's, it's less of a piece. I hope that's one good piece of advice or one good quote that people can, people can start to think about. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, before we close it off again, can you share with us your Instagram, uh, yours, the next years, and maybe mention the clubhouses that you have and I'll put it all in the description so everybody goes and follows. Yes, yes, that would be awesome. I would love to see you guys there. Um, so my personal Instagram is just at Alexa Hakopian. Um, and then our Anexia pages are called at Anexia Beauty. Um, that's A-N-N-E-X-E-A. -E -E so it's actually a combination, fun fact, of my name, my mom's name, and my sister's name. Um, so you can find us on all socials with that handle. And then on Clubhouse, my two clubs are called Young Women Professionals and Gen Next. Uh, and I would love to see you guys in there for conversations literally about anything under the sun. Um, so yeah, so thank you for so much for having me. This was so much fun. Um, I really appreciated it. And this was awesome. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, I had an amazing time and I hope everyone else at home got so many golden nuggets because doesn't matter how old this girl is, just like the uh, insights and all that knowledge coming out is incredible. Um, and love that you shared everything that you shared. Um, yeah, it was an incredible time. Thank you so much. And if you guys want to see maybe Anexia products in Halaza box, let us know in the comments. Maybe we can work something out. Yes, I would love that. I'm so excited for this club already. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thanks again, Alexa. Love you so much. Uh, and everyone else at home, bye. Bye. bye.